York City. If you're ready for the star of the show, make some noise. Two best in the world. What's up? Nice. How you doing? Look, what's going on? Look at everybody all mixed up. I like that. White girls with non-white guys. That's what I'm talking about, huh? Black guy with an Asian girl. God damn. You're like, we got to capitalize on this Tiger Woods shit. Um, <laughs> oh, somebody brought a kid. Good job, huh? Good job. That kid's gonna learn some new shit tonight, my friend. He's... Uh... Asians, good to see you, huh? All right. All right. You look upset. What's wrong? You look... look like you're looking for a Dance Dance Revolution machine or something. <laughs> Asians love that Dance Dance Revolution, don't you? God damn, they... Love Dance Dance Revolution. DDR. That's the short, that's what they call it, DDR. See, I said it, that guy smiled, oh, DDR. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Do you know what it is, sir? Do you know what the Dance Dance Revolution is? It's not an actual revolution. So you don't have to worry about that. It's not like a bunch of Asians are gonna knock on you, hey, stop dancing! It's not like that. <laughs> it's a revolution! It's it's a video game. It's a video game. You can relax again. <laughs> what it is, it's a, it's a TV screen in front of you, and it's got uh, these arrows that go in uh, different directions. They just keep moving, and they go in different directions, and they're different colors, and it plays this shitty Euro trash music in the background, right? <laughs> Sounds like you're in the backseat of a Persian guy's car. You know what I mean? Just... <laughs> hey, bro, this is best music, bro. This is... Hey, bro, this is best, bro. It's, it's best, bro. It's, it's biggest thing in Europe, bro. It's best in Europe, bro. It's... So it's got the TV, the arrows, and the shitty music, and then on the ground in front of you are these things that light up according to what you see on the screen, and you're supposed to step on that, and that will teach you how to dance. And the Asians love it. I remember last year I was in Singapore and the Chinese people in Singapore were lined up outside the arcade, lined up to play Dance Dance Revolution. And I was like, how hard can this shit be? So I stood in line. I get to the machine, I put my money in, the hardest fucking thing I've ever tried in my life. I didn't hit one single thing on the ground. I was one step behind every moment. And I was doing so bad at one point the machine even said, do you even have legs? It just said that right across the front of the screen. Just one point this, this came up in front of the screen, one of these, just... And I was doing so badly that the Chinese dude that was next was getting mad at me because he thought I was bullshitting on the machine. He starts yelling at me, hey asshole, if you're not going to play the game proper... Then go play something else. Go play something your people are good at. <laughs> Go play the taxi game. <laughs> so I got mad, right? I'm like, all right, fuckface. That's what I like to call people when I'm mad and I don't know their name. Fuckface, I find, is a good way of going about it. Because you can't really get offended if somebody calls you fuckface, can you? If I went, hey, fuckface, and you were like, well, you want to go? Well, you wanna... 
Like, you would actually be a fuckface if you wanted to fight if some guy called you fuckface. Because really, there's worse things you could be called than fuckface. What is a fuckface? It's the face you make when you fuck. That's all it is. It's... This, this is a fuckface. Look. Is that really so bad? Is it... You don't even have to say it to somebody. Next time somebody cuts you off in traffic, pull up beside them and go, Hey! You just call me fuckface? But don't roll your eyes. Don't roll your eyes when you don't be like, because then, then you're cum face. You don't want to be cum face. You just want to be fuck face. <laughs> I don't know what it is about coming that makes your whole body freeze for like 10 seconds. Oh God, oh. You get frozen in time, right? Oh my God, I'm gonna, oh. It's like the end of a sitcom, oh. And then the credits come up. <laughs> Explain that to him. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, fuck face. If you think you're so good, let me see you play this. This son of a bitch starts limbering up. Gets to the machine, sets it to advanced. Starts playing. He doesn't miss one single step. He's just... It was the only time in my life I seen an Asian dude open his eyes really wide. Just... <laughs> do it, do it. Open your eyes really wide. Try it, try it, try it. Right. Nothing happens, nothing happens. I love it. Just, this is the eyebrows move. That's it. It's just... <laughs> oh, I'm an asshole. Oh, man. Any Arabs in the house tonight? Arabs in the house? All right, thank you. Good night. All right. Um, <laughs> what kind of Arab are you? Oh, good. Yeah, you're united. Good. <laughs> so I heard. I don't know if you answered me in Arabic or if you said the country just now. <laughs> One at a time there, fellas. <laughs> What, what are you? What? 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 Libya. Libya, Lebanon, any other L countries? Oh, good, yeah. Well, just for the record, it, it, just, you're a stone's throw away from each other. Listen, I am... Um... <laughs> just for the record, my Arab friends, I, uh, I don't do any Arab jokes in my act. It's not that I don't think you're funny, I just, you know, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to die. Um, see, because I'll do a joke about an Arab, and they'll look like they're laughing. But it's not the same laugh you're doing. Like, I'll do a joke about an Arab, and you guys will be, ah, ha, 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 and you look at the Arab guy, and be like, ha, 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 ha. Oh no, I get this funny joke. Ha 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 ha. No, no, it's a chlumis of chlumis. It's funny. I get it. Ah, yeah. mm. Don't, don't worry. I will talk to him after. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like every time you turn on the news nowadays, some new country is fucking with an Arab country? Every time you turn on the news, I kind of blame the media for what's going on wrong in the world right now because they kind of just perpetuate stereotypes about people. They don't tell you that's what they're doing. They don't go, hey, this is what you need to think. But they know how people's brains work. So what they do, they enforce all this shit, you know? What they do is they'll show you an image of somebody of a different racial background and then they'll show you an alternate image like right away of something completely different. They don't say the two images are together. They kind of present it like, what do you think? Like what they do is they show you like an Asian guy and then a car accident. <laughs> a 
I'll show you an Indian guy and a 7-Eleven. What do you think? I'll show you an Arab guy and an explosion. I knew it, you know. That's how they get in your head. They put, they put it in there. And whenever they show you like Arabic being spoken on TV, it's always like these crazy people in these protests in the Arab world. And they're always speaking this really harsh Arabic. And so I was like, <laughs> Fuck America! Because that's what they want us to think is going on over there. So I wanted to get to the bottom of this shit, so I went to the Middle East last year. Because I needed to get some rectifying for myself. Is that rectifying? Whatever. I needed to sort this shit out for myself. Because I had this whole impression in my head that Arabic was such an ugly language because it's always like and people are like, oh my god, no wonder they're angry. They're vomiting at each other when they talk. <laughs> then you go to the Middle East and you hear real Arabs speaking Arabic and it sounds nice. I was actually turned on by it. Because I was at this cafe in Dubai and I'm just chilling, right? And there's these two Arab girls having a conversation behind me and I'm eavesdropping. I have no clue what the fuck they're saying. But it sounded nice to me. Because all I hear behind me is, And I was like, oh God, this is good. Oh. But they never show you those Arabs on TV because they're boring. They only show you the crazy. Basically, all they're showing you of the Arab world are the rednecks of the Arab world. That's why their Arabic is so bad. If you were to translate their Arabic accent into an American accent, they'd sound like this. We're going to kill the whole fucking world. Yeah! That's what they would sound like. That's how the media does it. They show you all the fucked up people. That's all they show is the messed up Arabs. I bet you in the Arab world, all they show them of America is Jerry Springer. <laughs> Look at the Americans, they're fucking stupid. <laughs> He's fucking his cousin. <laughs> Not like you and me, it's different. They're doing it dirty, it's different. We're doing it different. They do some other way. Different. Ah. <sighs> uh. Look at all these Indian faces, Jesus Christ. <laughs> look at you brown bastards, god damn. Indians just look upset that they had to spend money to be here tonight, don't you? <laughs> That's the look on their face, just... <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> I don't know why I'm spending money to see someone that looks just like me. I can stay home and look in the mirror <laughs> for free. We are an endless supply of cheap jokes. And you know what the best thing about it is? Indian people, we're proud of our cheapness. That's the, you're never going to insult us by calling us cheap. That's the best part, you know. <laughs> you walk up to an Indian, you guys are cheap. Thank you for noticing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That guy just called you cheap. No, no, no. He pronounced it cheap, but what he was saying was smart. <laughs> Very smart, he was saying. <laughs> We're cheap. We're, you know, here's the thing, too. It's not like I'm up here going, you Indian people are cheap, and I'm the one that's not. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just as fucking cheap as you. The difference is now I have money. I'm just cheap in better stores. <laughs> I'll be looking at like an Armani shirt. I hate when this happens. I'm looking at a shirt from like a high-end designer and I flip the tag over and I see made in India. I'm stuck with a real dilemma. I'm like, shit, do I buy this? Or do I call my uncle? <laughs> I wonder if he knows where this factory is. We are cheap. Everybody's cheap, aren't they? Never call white people cheap. White people get really upset when you call them cheap. You ever call the white person cheap? They get very angry. Because white people actually are, are probably the only people that aren't cheap. 
You ever call a white guy cheap? You're cheap. Fuck you, I'm cheap. I'll buy you a beer. You want a beer? That's how white guys get around being cheap. You want a beer? 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 Huh? You want a beer? Huh? Fuck you, I'm not, I'm not cheap. I'll buy everybody beer. Everybody's cheap. It's all about levels, you know? Where are the Jews at? Jews in the house? All right, Arabs, the Jews are in here. Go talk to them. You've got some hugging to do. <laughs> Jews, I don't know how you got the title of being cheap. It's very offensive to Indian people. And people are like, Jews are cheap. We're like, no, that is very incorrect. I am cheap. Jews are thrifty. Big difference. There must have been like one Jewish guy back in the day who was cheap and he fucked it up for the rest of you, for the rest of your lives. Because Jews aren't actually cheap. You know who's cheap? Asians. Asians are cheap as shit. Chinese people specifically. Where are the Chinese people at? Where are you? Always the Wu family. Nice. Um, Chinese people, you are cheap. Like, it's crazy. But it's about levels. Like, if you were to rate, like, the top three cheap people in the world, Indians for sure would be number one on that list. See? See the pride in it? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. We are ek dam number one. We are... <laughs> Indians for sure number one on that list. Very, very close second, Chinese. And Jews will give you third place, you know, just to keep you in the game. How about that, you know? So you don't feel like you're losing everything, all right? So... <laughs> but it's all about levels. Like, let's just say there's a Louis Vuitton boutique, right? An Indian guy will walk past this Louis Vuitton store every day of his life and never once step foot in there. Like, not even on their best sale will I be going in there. No, thank you. Now, if Louis Vuitton's having a sale, Jewish guy's going in and he's buying shit. It was on sale, what do you want? Machus. <laughs> Chinese people, sale or no sale? You're going into Louis Vuitton every day. You never buy shit. But you'll go in every day. Sales guy, can I help you, sir? Uh, no, just uh, looking. <laughs> Minute sales guy turns his back, Chinese guy whips out a camera. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Goes home, emails the pictures to Hong Kong. Make this bag quickly. We'll sell it to the Indians. That's a sale you never want to see happening. A Chinese guy trying to sell an Indian guy a Louis Vuitton bag? Neither one of them can say Louis Vuitton properly. Hey, Mr. Indian guy. You want to sign a pack? <laughs> Who's this? Who's he? This is the Indian hand motion for I don't know. I don't know. Who's he? Who's he? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Who's he? Who's this? Who's this guy? It's uh, to sign a pack. It's uh, initials uh, LV. Who's he? Who's this LV? Who's he? Remember growing up, Dad, who finished the milk? I don't know. I don't... I, I wasn't dead, I don't know. Son, I can't hear. Nothing. Nothing is coming. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean. Nothing is coming. Nothing. Who's this? Who's this L.V.? That's a uh, sign uh, initial. Then there has a name underneath. Who's Woon? Who's Lose Woon? Lose Woon? Lose Woon? What the fuck are you saying? I'm reading designer's name, Lose Woon. Why don't you spell what you see? Okay. Okay. Okay, lose. Lose is lose, huh? 
Absolutely lose is lose. 150,000 percent sure? Lose is lose. That's an Indian person convincing you of shit. You ever try and buy something like, oh, give me the best price. Okay, sir, I'm telling you, sir, final price. Best price. Take it and go. Take it and go. Take it and go. Okay, so lose, lose is lose. All right, fine, lose is lose. What's his last name? Wooden. I didn't say say it all fucked up. I said spell it out. Okay. We. U I. P D O N. Because that's how we spell shit. We'll go slow for like the first three letters, and then we jog through the other half of the name, don't we? We do the same thing with phone numbers. Or right, give me your phone number. Okay. Two one two. Triple five. Eight two four six. And the messed up part is, we know the rhythm. <laughs> Here's the thing with Indian people being cheap. Our cheapness actually changed the world. You see, you may be sitting there going, well, how did your cheapness say it changed the world? Well, let me tell you how. Because our cheapness actually benefited everybody. We're so dedicated to being cheap for so long that Indian people actually created the number zero. <laughs> Do you know how much dedication that took? That means back in the day, some Indian guy was looking at the numeric system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. None of those are amounts I want to pay. <laughs> then his friend came along and drew a circle. What's that? Nothing. What's inside of it? Nothing. What's its value? Nothing. It's beautiful. We shall call it Jiro. <laughs> Take it and go. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Any Italian people in the house tonight? Italians? <clears throat> are you real Italian or are you like a New York Italian? In New York, that's not fucking real Italian, you know. You what? Your parents are from Italy, so do you speak Italian? Oh, well, then you're a real Italian. As long as you speak Italian to me, you're real Italian. Because you meet a lot of people in New York that are Italian, but don't speak a fucking word of Italian. But they act more Italian than the actual Italians do. I was standing in Manhattan, I was standing right in Times Square the other day, and uh, this Italian dude walked past me. He had a, what, what I thought was like an Indian girl. Look, looked like an Indian girl. And they walked past me. I was just standing there chilling. You know, just, you know, Times Square, you can just stand there and look at shit. So they walked past and I didn't check out his girl. All I did was this. <laughs> they walked past. I was like, it's an Indian thing. The minute Indian people see another Indian person, we're like, <gasps> I thought I was the only one. <laughs> That's the bubble we live in. <laughs> but I didn't gawk. She walked, they walked by and I just did this. And I just continued looking at whatever, nothing. I was just looking at Times Square. You're just fucking looking at shit. And I don't know how this dude saw me. But all, I, all of a sudden, behind me, I hear, Hey! And it's Times Square, so you don't pay attention to every A that you hear. So I'm like, I'm just, you know, Hey! Hey, dick face! I was like, dick face? I want to see who this dick face is. Huh? I'm like, that's very close to my fuck face. What is a... I mean, if this is a fuck face, what's a dick face? You know, I don't like... I don't know what a dick face is. I don't, 
I don't know what a dick face is. So I want to see, where is this dick face? He goes, hey, dick face. And I go, and he goes, yeah, you. I'm like, I'm dick face? I'm... Where the fuck do you get the balls to look at my girl? Because this is what they do is when they get angry, they'll ask you a question, and it's a really fucked up question. And they, it's, it's a rhetorical question, to be honest with you. But they ask you like you're supposed to answer. They wait for you to answer. Where the fuck? Let me ask you a question. Where the fuck? Where? Where the fuck do you get the balls to look at my girl? Where? And I'm like, I, what? I... Where? Show me. Why don't you fucking show me? Take me, take me to the fucking store where you got the balls to look at my girl. Where? Where the fuck did you get the fucking balls? Where? And I, I panicked, right? I'm like, Costco. <laughs> got a jar. There's a big difference between that Italian and real Italians, aren't there? Because it's a race, it's a race culture issue. Everybody's got this race culture issue in this country, you know? Anywhere, you know, there's a big difference between race and culture. Because racially, I'm an Indian man. Culturally, not at all. <laughs> Many of you may think you're Indian or, you know, some people think they're Italian, but then they've never been to Italy in their life, they don't speak Italian. It's, it always bugs me out when they call black people in America African Americans. You're not fucking African. You're black. If a black guy showed up in Africa tomorrow, what's happening? You'd be like, that motherfucker's crazy. Get him away from me. They'd be looking for a white guy. Oh my God, thank God you're here. <laughs> Those brothers over there are at their mind. Same thing for me, you know, there's a big difference between race and culture. Because all my life, I've been identifying myself as an Indian man. I'm always like, I'm Indian. Yeah, what are you? I'm Indian. Yeah, where are you from? I'm Indian. What do you mean, where am I from? I'm Indian. <laughs> then I realized something. I was born and raised in Canada. There's nothing Indian about me. The only thing Indian about me are my parents and my skin tone. That's it. Culturally, I'm not Indian at all. And the only reason I know this is because last year I went to India to do some shows. And I thought I was Indian. And when we were flying over to India, I had this overwhelming Indian feeling. <laughs> Inside of me, I was like, I'm the most Indian man ever. <laughs> I just thought I was so Indian, you know? We arrived in Bombay, I was like yelling at the flight attendant, open the doors to this plane. Let me have my Indian people. Let me show those Indians what it's like to be Indian. She opened the doors to that plane, I turned Canadian so fast. <laughs> I was like, I am so... <laughs> Did I step in shit just now? Did I... When you arrive in India, the minute they open the doors of that plane, you get an overwhelming blast of shit smell right up your nose. They have a... It's almost like they hire somebody to shit in front of every plane that lands. Quick, quick, here it comes on. Shit, shit and go. Shit and go. Go, go, go. And if you're an Indian person out there thinking to yourself, that's not true, that's not true then fuck you, you probably had a cold or landed in the wrong country. Because <laughs> racially, I'm an Indian man. Culturally, there's things that happen culturally. If you were not raised in that part of the world, you will find it unacceptable. Like in India, grown-ass men, grown-ass men, hold hands with other men. <laughs> and walk down the street. Like everything's okay. And they don't just hold hands. They're holding fucking pinkies and swinging that shit. And 
to them, there's nothing gay about it. Here's the thing. There's nothing gay to them. To them, I'm holding my friend's hand. What's gay about that? <laughs> See, you grow up over here. There is no acceptable time for two straight men to ever touch hands. <laughs> ever. You ever walk to the mall with one of your guy friends and your hand accidentally bumps it? You're like, hey, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Get off me! But in India, grown-ass men hold it like, and the guys holding pinkies, the best shit about it is, they'll still try and mack on chicks. Hey, what's up? Hello, hello. Hello. How are you looking very lovely today? <laughs> Some guys act like thugs, holding hands. They'll be holding pinkies and eyeballing you. Like they're trying to start some shit. I was at the beach in Bombay, right? I'm hanging out. This gang of like 17, sorry, 16. Well, 17's an odd number. That would mean one guy's like, somebody hold my hand, somebody hold my hand, right? So, this, this gang of like 16 dudes is walking across the beach, holding pinkies and giving everybody dirty looks. with their dress pants and flip-flops. <laughs> how are you going to start a fight holding another man's hand? How, how? how let go, let go, let go! <laughs> it's a different world over there, man. And I was there doing shows I remember before I went to India, I was all nervous, right? Because my friends were like, my friends were like, hey, Russell, man, when you go to India, are they going to understand your jokes? And I was like, I don't know. Are they? And then and they're like, are you going to offend them? I'm like, I, fuck, I don't know. Am I going to offend them? Because I realized something before I went. A lot of my jokes, the punchline is the Indian accent. <laughs> but it was funny because when I performed in India, Everybody understood every single thing that came out of my mouth. Every joke, every line, every like suggestion. They were with me, like they were with it. They were completely there. And it was funny because every time I did the Indian accent, they laughed harder. Because I think that they don't think that they have that accent. I think they think there's like one guy in India with this accent. Probably the same guy shitting in front of every plane, you know what I mean? Because they would come up to me on the streets. People would like in India walk up to me on the streets. First of all, I don't know how the hell they recognize me on the streets. I'm like, it's India. There's over a billion and a half people there. I look like every, I look at least like fucking 15 million people. But they come up to you on the street, they go, Russell, Russell! They were so emphatic with their compliments, too. It was the best thing. Russell, you are sure last night? You are sure, Russell? You are sure last night? Too good. Too good. Too good. Son, first class, A1. Fantastic. The show was fantastic. Russell, your show was mind blasting. Mind blasting. You mean mind blowing? No, no, no. I didn't even blow your mind. This blasted my mind. It was. It's an incredible place to go. I mean, for anybody, whether you're Indian or not, just, just to go there and just see, like history and shit that you've never seen before. When I went to uh, after my shows, when I went to Calcutta, because that's where my mom is from, and I uh, I went to go see my mom's two brothers, my uncles, and I did something very rude in the Indian culture. I didn't stay at my uncle's house. And, ooh, right? So, whatever, you know? Because this is what I mean. I'm too North American for my own good. I'm too used to certain luxuries now. You know, like running water. <laughs> A toilet. <laughs> toilet paper. There's only so much ass washing with a cup that I want to do in my life. You know what I mean? Excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me.
Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That one sounded runny. <laughs> She's never coming back. Are you kidding? Fuck that. It's warm in here, isn't it? Nice. I'm generally sweat. I'm dabbing. Maybe because I'm hairy, that's probably why I'm sweating. I'm a hairy man, I don't care. Men are supposed to be hairy. That's, that's the way God built us. Thank you. <laughs> but that's the media. The media did that shit to us. The media made it unsexy to be hairy. Have you noticed that? That's what they did. Because they show you images of dudes nowadays with no hair. That's what they did. And it gets in your head. You don't know what's getting in your head. Remember in the 70s? All the dudes had big hairy chests. And all the women were like, ooh, he's such a man. <laughs> now you see a guy running across a beach with no shirt on and no body hair or leg anywhere. There's no hair. And women are like, that's what a man should look like. And that's what a fucking woman should look like. <laughs> they do it to target the younger women. Younger women generally fall for this shit. I know, because I sleep around. <laughs> I don't discriminate, young, old. Sexy, sexy. I was with this one girl. She was in her early 20s. I took off my shirt, and she got physically mad that I had hair on my chest. She started pointing, she was like, ew, you're fucking gross. Have you ever felt your penis invert? Have you ever had that feeling just? <laughs> I had to sit down and pee for a month. Speaking of sit down and pee, look who's back. <laughs> You were gone long, damn, that was... You were like, hey, we're gonna go see the Indian guy, maybe we should have Indian food. <laughs> She's like, honey, I don't think Indian food was such a good idea tonight. <laughs> You're Italian, are you a hairy dude? Yeah? And you like it, right? It's good, it's more masculine when they're hairy, isn't it? You don't like hair. Look, you paused. You did an inhale. You did this. I went, you like hair? She went, um... He doesn't have what? Back hair. That's the problem. Oh, back hair is the problem. He doesn't have back hair, so he's okay. Ooh. Fuck that. Men are hairy. That's how we're built. Now, I'm not saying if you were born without hair, you know, body hair, that you're less of a man. That's just the way God built you. Maybe he doesn't love you as much. <laughs> but, but I'm saying I don't trust guys that have hair and get rid of it. I don't trust you. You're a fucking douchebag. <laughs> There's certain grooming that's okay, that is acceptable in my eyes, you know? Like if you have a unibrow and you get rid of the middle, that's fine. I had a unibrow, I got rid of it. I've got two eyebrows now. That to me made good sense mathematically. If I have one, chop it in half, I have two. But I don't trust dudes, you did your eyebrows. I see you did, brother, I know you did. Italian guy, you're, no, no, you did the middle and then you got carried away, because your shit is... Get a shot of that guy. His shit is way too neat. Look at how neat that is. That's not natural. Men shouldn't pluck their eyebrows. Because we don't know what the end result is supposed to look like. I said to one of my friends, I go, yo, man, you got a unibrow. Well, what should I do? Here's some tweezers. Okay. I go, well, what do I do then? I just, here, pluck, pluck him out, dude. Pluck him out. I go, I'll leave you to it. I left him to it. I come back to his house. He shows up at my house the next day. He kept plucking his eyebrows. <laughs> shows up at my house the next day like this. <laughs> I'm like, did you do something to your eyebrows? <laughs> no, why? <laughs> oh, I don't know, because you look fucking surprised. <laughs> For two weeks, I couldn't take the guy seriously. 
I've got some bad news. How do you sleep with that shit? <laughs> I'll admit to, uh, to doing one extra thing, and, I, and, and I'll admit it to you. I trim the hair on my chest. I trim it. I don't shave it off. I just trim it down. I have... Oh, we'll talk after, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have clippers that I travel with, you know, like, you know, for your hair, and I, and I, and I, and I trim the hair on my chest. You know, I, I give myself like a fade. <laughs> oh, you know why I trim it? I'll tell you, I have a reason for trimming it. Just because I don't want this shit hanging out the front of my shirt like this. <laughs> I hate... Well, no, see, yours is low. You're okay. I, I, see, I don't like when I'm talking to somebody and they have this shit hanging out the front of the shirt because it distracts the hell out of me. <laughs> hey, what's up? Oh, nothing. Got a new job. <laughs> Thinking about buying some real estate. <laughs> Met a new girl, she's really great. <laughs> then a breeze comes along and. <laughs> so I trim it, I trim it down. I start here. <laughs> with, you know, I start with a zero. <laughs> then one, two, three. It's nice, it's very gradual. It's a really good fade. Looks like the back of Arsenio Hall's head in like 91, just really good fade. Why are you acting like I'm the only guy in this room who shaves his balls? Why, why is this happening right now? You're a ball shaver, aren't you? I mean, I don't mean of everybody, I mean of your own. I mean, it's not like... I don't mean like you've got a shop in the street, you know, this is, welcome to Barney's Ball Shaving Hut. <laughs> you don't shave your balls, dude? Why wouldn't you? It's, it's just better. It's free. Look, I could stand here right now and do this. Look. And I know that my balls are going wong, 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 wong. You have a big bush. They're not moving. They're just moving with you. <laughs> Women appreciate the effort. When you pull it out, there's nothing there. Look. See, those are the sluts that see a lot of dick. Those are them. <laughs> Hello, whores! <laughs> it's better. It's just better presentation, that's why. And I'll be, you know, and <laughs> the real reason, honestly, the real reason I shave it down? To make my dick look bigger. That's why. <laughs> that's true. That's right. I'm not afraid to admit it. You know, if you mow the lawn, the yard looks bigger. That's what you do. That's... Because let's be honest, as a brown man to another brown man, God wasn't kind to us in the dick department, all right? I'm waiting, here's what I'm saying. I'm not saying he shortchanged us, okay? I'm just saying he didn't give us any extra shit. God gave Indian people a lot of things, big dicks, not one of them. I was like, all right, here's what's going to happen, Indians. You're going to be great with computers. Okay. You're going to be able to survive in the worst conditions imaginable. Okay. You're going to be able to leave those conditions, go anywhere in the world, and become successful. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, God. Yeah? What about penises? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Average. Then he called the black people over. Come here for a minute. I want to talk to you. Listen, um, people are going to be fucking with you for centuries. Here's a little extra dick. Oh, don't worry about it. I took it from the Indians. It's okay. It color matches perfectly. It... <laughs> but I do, I do. I, that, and see the media put that in our heads too. They made us insecure about the size of our penises. You watch a porno nowadays, you see these guys with these giant hogs on them, these fucking Chernobyl waste <laughs> nuclear reactor dicks on them. Just, you watch that and you see this guy and you're like, oh my God, I'm never going to have a dick like that. You're not supposed to have a dick like that. Animals shouldn't have dicks like that. 
Then you watch TV late at night. They got all these products, male enhancement pills. And... Honey, what's that? It's a natural male enhancement. Oh, really? For energy? No. Natural male enhancement. Ooh. They make you insecure about the size of your penis. And then women see this and they get caught up in the hype. I've heard chicks, oh my God, I just want to go with a big dick. It's like guys with big dicks. I, I don't know, it's something about a big dick that I just love. I like, I, like, I don't know, I don't even care what he looks like. He's got a big dick. I'm, oh. I'm like, that's because you're a fucking whore, that's why. Your vagina's huge. You know, and instead of giving me a pill to make my dick bigger, here's a cream to tighten you up. So what I'm saying is, as a brown man, with my balls shaved and everything, I can confidently whip out my wiener. I go like this, ta-da! But if you have a big bush down there, you know, you're gonna pull it out and she's gonna be like, is that it? You go, no, no, but wait, there's more. Ladies, what I'm saying is, you shouldn't get caught up in all that penis size hype. Just don't get caught up in it. Because let me tell you something. You need to start sleeping with us guys with smaller to regular size penises. Because we put in way more effort. Let me tell you something. Guys with big dicks are never going to make love to you properly. You know why? They don't have to. They got a big dick. They just show up. So. I can't believe I did that with my mom in the audience. <laughs> Sorry, mom. I have a theory, all right? I have a theory. I believe that the size of your penis is in direct correlation with how much sex you will have in your life. The smaller your dick, the more you will fuck. Because we got our, our pride is riding on it, you know? Our ego's at stake, you know? You got a small dick? Oh yeah, you think I'm a small dick? I'm gonna fuck you, I'm gonna fuck your friends. I'm gonna fuck this stool, I don't care. I'll fuck a stool, I'll fuck a water bottle, I'll fuck everything. We don't care, we're just fucking everything. The smaller your dick, the more you will fuck. You don't believe me? Look at the two largest populations in the world. Chinese guys started clapping like, yeah, oh, oh hey, wait a minute. Ooh, hey, Lomo. <sighs> it's funny, I look over at the kid, he's just like, I don't know what's happening anymore. I don't even have balls yet. I don't know how. I hope it wasn't a shot of the kid's nuts. That'd be awkward, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't like a lot of sports, I'll be honest with them. I hate soccer. I hate soccer. No, what, no. what are you? You boo, because I have an opinion? <laughs> boo your opinion. Get out of America. We don't like your thoughts. <laughs> I, hate, I, I hate soccer. Fuck soccer. <laughs> and fuck you for liking it. Let me tell you why I don't like soccer. Because they have this World Cup. World Cup. Let me tell you something about the World Cup. It's not the fucking World Cup. You know why? Because the two countries that represent me are never in the World Cup. Canada and India are never in the World Cup. Canada, for obvious reasons. It's a world event. We don't get involved in world events, you know? We look at the U.S. Are you guys going? Yeah? Oh, no, go ahead. That's great. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, that's perfect. Yeah. No, no, we'll, we'll stay back. We'll tidy up. Sorry about it. It's cool. 
It always bothers me that India is never in the World Cup. We're the second largest population in the world. There's 1.2 billion people over there. We can't come up with 11 fucking guys to make a team. <laughs> you know what the problem is? You have no idea how hard it is to kick a ball straight with curly-toed shoes on. <laughs> We're standing in the middle field. I'm open, I'm open! Where the hell is the ball going? It always freaks me out that the Chinese are never in the World Cup. You're the largest population in the world. And you're known for kicking. <laughs> but it's kicking. You know, I want to see the Chinese team in the World Cup. I want to see the Chinese team when they get into their huddle. That's what I really want to see. You, know? you see all the other countries when they get in their huddle? All right, guys, we're going to get out there. We're going to pass that ball around. We're going to have a good time. All right? Go team. You see the Chinese team? Okay. So listen up. When you see the ball coming, then you go down the field. Chase the quite low with the ball. Something's going down. Be a man. I love Latin people. They're fun to me, man. They're... Are you, are you, are you Latino, bro? Are you? What are you? Colombian. Your girl, Latina, she... What, are you Colombian as well? Oh, you found each other. <laughs> Mira, Colombiana? Si. Sí. <laughs> Colombiano? Si. Sí. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Latin people. Any Portuguese people here tonight? Portuguese, really? Brazilian too? Any Brazilians? No, oh, you Brazilian? Brazilians speak Portuguese, right? So, so you speak Portuguese though, right? Yeah, so if you speak Portuguese, obviously you can understand Spanish then, right? Because they're very similar to each other, aren't they? You ever hear somebody speaking Portuguese? Doesn't it sound like Spanish being spoken by a deaf person? <laughs> Portuguese just sounds like really badly pronounced Spanish, doesn't it? Here's a Spanish guy counting to three. Unos, dos, tres. Here's a Portuguese guy. Unos, dos, tres. <laughs> Cuatro, cinco. <laughs> Vaca, ga. Here's a Spanish guy. Como estas? Here's a Portuguese guy. Como estas? <laughs> oh. You know, somebody got mad at me one night, they go, you know, Russell, it's cool when you make fun of different races, but you shouldn't talk about deaf people. I was like, what? Yeah, you shouldn't talk about deaf people. No, seriously, what? <laughs> you know what? Fuck deaf people. Are they here? Even if they were, it's up to you to tell them what I'm saying. Fuck them in their ears. Let me tell you something about deaf people. Does anybody here know sign language? And I mean actual sign language, not this. <laughs> and not gang signs. You can't do gang signs to a deaf person. I'm like, that guy stutters. You know. <laughs> if you know sign language, you'll know that I'm not making this shit up. Whoever invented sign language had their own little racist agenda happening. Because sign language is a very offensive way of communicating. They're trying to change it now to make it more politically correct. I'm serious. You know what the sign for Chinese person is? Let me tell you something. It's exactly what you think it is. <laughs> you still feel bad for these deaf sons of bitches? You know what the sign for Indian person is? Because I live in L.A., I had to learn the sign for Mexican. I learned two signs for Mexican. The first one doesn't even seem offensive until you find out what it is. Here's the first sign for Mexican. Look. You know what that is? A poncho. Here's the second sign for Mexican. This is fucked up, too. Look. A long-ass mustache. What the fuck does that have to do with being Mexican? My gardener's never shown up at my house. Hola, senor. I'm here to shave the grass. 
You're Colombian. I don't know what the sign for Colombian is. Probably, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying. It's... Cubans, probably. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm speculating on these ones. Black people, I don't know what the sign for black people is. You know, it's probably fucked up. You know what I mean? And, I don't know. I think he was a Negro. And I'm just saying. I don't know. I cannot confirm these ones. But anything is possible. Do you know what the sign for retard is? This is foul. I'm not making this up. Here's a sign for retard. Uh, That's the sign for retard. Uh, you can have two deaf guys standing around going, Hey, look. Uh. You have handicapped people mocking other handicapped people. <laughs> Jews, I don't know what you've done to the deaf community. I don't know if they had land and you wanted it, but I learned... <laughs> I learned three signs for Jewish people, and I'm not making this shit up. Each sign is progressively more offensive than the next. The first, here's the first sign for a Jewish person. Now the first sign isn't so bad, it kind of makes sense when you see it. Here's the first sign for a Jewish person, look. Right? It's a long beard. You go, oh, that makes sense. A Hasidic guy, yeah, it makes sense, right? Then they start to get fucked up, and I'm not making this shit up. Here's the second sign for a Jewish person. That's fucked up, isn't it? And here's the third sign for Jew. And I'm not making any of this shit up. Look. That is some foul shit. Arabs, I don't know what the sign for Arab is, but I can only imagine, you know. <laughs> you know what? It can't be because deaf people can't hit that note. <laughs> Thank you very much, New York. You guys were awesome. Good night. Bad tonight.